Praise the Lord. Welcome to the house of the Lord. This midweek service. So glad that you are here, and uh, thank you for the Lord and His help in our lives. God is good, isn't He? He is faithful. It's who He is. He can't be anything but that. It's His nature. He's faithful. The same God yesterday, today, and forever. We can depend upon Him. In the midst of a world where everything's changing, you never know what might happen. Uh, we know that our God, He is the same, and it's a firm foundation that we have in Him. Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? We're going to enter into worship, and uh, let's just prepare our hearts uh, to receive from the Lord tonight. Brother Marino is going to come and lead us into worship. Lift your hand, your heart tonight. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Lord, this is the day that you've made, and so we rejoice in it. We say thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness, your mercies that are new every morning. God, great is your faithfulness. Lord, would you touch and move tonight by your spirit. Open our hearts, our minds to receive from you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, we're going to sing He Set Me Free. One of the things, I, I love the new choruses and I love, I love the change. I actually like things that are new and different. I'm not, you can tell I'm not real good at leading it, but I like it. But I love them old ones because the old ones, they sing things that if you ain't right, you can't sing them. <laughs> you know, we're going to sing about He Set Me Free. And, and it talks about now I'm climbing higher each day. Either you is or you aren't. And, you know, these old songs, you got to, you got to be living it if you're really going to sing it. If you're going to get excited, there's got to be something really happening in there. I pray as we sing these songs tonight that you can sing them with all your heart. Amen. Well, it's like a burning prison I dwell. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. Oh, but Jesus came and he listened to me. Shout it! 
first one again long years ago went out and said I had no hope no peace within down on my knees in agony I prayed to Jesus and he gladly set me free I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul roll away For he's everything to me Now I can feel him by my side My feeble step He comes to God When trials come He comforts me Through faith in him or sin I have the victory I never shall forget today When all the burdens of my soul were rolled away Makes me happy, glad and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Oh sinner, come to Jesus now. At his dear feet, just tumbling bow. Confess to him your every sin. He'll save you, cleanse you, give you peace and joy with him. sing one more I'm going that way it's one thing to start it's another thing to finish we got to finish this thing I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful life a beautiful place of mansions fair the skies ever bright where all who believe the Savior near forever shall stay and having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way. Jesus, Savior, I adore you with me each day. I'm singing to him and never just pray. Yes, singing his praises all day long, I'm going that way again. I'm going that way. to him and never destroy yes singing his praises all day long i'm going that way the glorious news i tell and sing as onward i go that those who are still astray in sin my savior may know i want them to sing his praise above some beautiful day for glory to him who died for me i'm going that way i'm going that Praises all day long, I'm going that way. I know I shall meet him at the games and trials are past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. And oh, I believe that when we meet, well done, he will say. For trusting his soul, redeeming love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Trials are 
shall be past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. You know I believe that when we meet, well, that he will say, for trusting his soul redeeming love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Yes, he's the Savior I adore. He's with me stay. I'm clinging to him and never just pray. Yes, singing his praises all the day long and going that way. I know I shall meet him at the gate when trials are passed. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. And oh, I believe that when we meet, well, that he will say, For trusting his soul redeeming love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. clap of praise tonight Lord we just thank you for your goodness God we thank you for your grace where would we be if not for your faithfulness in our lives if not for your grace it's for by grace you're saved through faith not of your works lest any of you should boast grace is how we've made it thus far and grace is going to help us make it all the way to heaven. Amen. By His grace. You may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for being here tonight voting for Wednesday night on a rainy Wednesday night. And uh, thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Come in, Pastor. Man, if I could go ahead and get the ushers to make their way this way. I don't know about y'all with the talk of heaven, the talk about the grace of God. I'm thankful that I'm saved tonight. Amen. Anybody in here thankful for the grace of God? Hey Amen. I was up there at the furniture store today and uh, had a customer call. And she said, I was looking at my ticket and uh, trying to figure some things out. And I realized the wrong name was on there. Somehow or another, two people had been checking different ones out. And somehow the wrong name had gotten put on this customer's ticket. And she said, you know, I'd, I'd really like to see if I could get an update on when my furniture is going to be here. So I went in there and I changed her name, got it put in there right, and I told her when her furniture was going to be there. But I want to tell you something tonight, church. I'm here to give you an update that the return of the Lord is soon. He's coming back any day now, and I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that my name is right, that it's in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I'm ready for when He comes back for us. Amen. Amen. Brother Coker, will you pray over this offering tonight?
praise the Lord. When I kneel in prayer, I know I'm going to meet him. Hallelujah. He promised. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Uh, we want to uh, remember uh, several requests we've been uh, praying for. Uh, Brother Good uh, had a, uh, a heart procedure uh, yesterday, and they punctured one of his arteries. And, uh, uh, but uh, he's doing a lot better. Uh, the Lord's been touching him and healing him. Uh, the doctor was surprised that he was healing so fast. Glory to God. Uh, but I believe that, uh, that God answers prayer. Praise the Lord. We want to continue to pray for Brother Good. Sister Monk uh, was in the hospital. Uh, I talked to her daughter yesterday. She, uh, she was supposed to come home today, and uh, she was doing better. They, uh, they thought there were several things going on with her, but uh, uh, they kind of narrowed things down, and she was starting to get better, and so they're going to send her home. So we just appreciate that. Let's remember Brother Bowen and Sister Bowen. Brother Bowen has just been really weak. Uh, hasn't been up, hasn't been eating, and, uh, and we want the Lord just to touch him. Uh, Sister Sam Cutsforth had a surgery today. It was outpatient, but it was this afternoon, so I haven't heard from her uh, as far as uh, how things went, uh, but we want to remember her in prayer. Our pastor is in Sherman tonight. Uh, and uh, with uh, Brother Adam's uh, church, and so we want to remember him. Uh, God would just touch him. We want to continue to remember uh, Brother Josh, that God would continue to, to do a work uh, in his body. We want to continue to remember his family, that God would strengthen and encourage them. Sister Katrina, uh, just believe in God to continue that work that he began. Praise the Lord. I wonder if we have requests over on this side of the church. Yes. Okay, okay. Let's believe God for a healing. Praise the Lord. Somebody else? Sister? Okay, special unspoken. Do we have other unspoken tonight? Praise the Lord. Sister? Okay, okay. Let's remember this neighbor. Sister Spraybury. Okay, okay, let's just believe God to minister. Praise the Lord. Lord God. Brother Baker, let's remember our country. The United States needs revival. The world needs revival. Praise the Lord. Over here, Sister Freeberry. Jean South. Yep, remember Sister South. God would just touch her. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Why don't we stand tonight? I was sitting up here tonight, and I, I began thinking about uh, a friend of mine uh, who preached quite a bit over in the Boyd area. When, uh, when we were over there, he preached the first real revival we had at Boyd. Uh, uh, he preached, and uh, he has passed on now. But I'll never forget one of the sermons he preached on let the redeemed of the Lord say so, except he preached... Let the redeemed of the Lord say, so? Well, you've got Jericho up here with this tall wall. So? Well, we're in jail. We've been beaten and we're bleeding and uh, we're in stocks and bonds. So? Uh, we're in the middle of a shipwreck. Uh, things are bad. They're worse than what I... So? Praise the Lord. 
Glory to God. Because we serve the creator of the universe. Glory to God. And so every situation that we face, God has made a way. Praise the Lord. He's made provision, all of the request. Glory to God. Let's go to him tonight. Let's just believe God to minister, to move. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord God, we glorify you. We thank you that we can come before your throne of grace. Lord God, that we can find mercy, that we can find grace to help in time of need. God, we come to you. We're looking to you tonight. Oh God, because you're our help. Lord God, we come to you with these requests asking you to heal. Lord God, asking you to minister their situations and circumstances. Lord, their unsaved loved ones. Father, we're praying that you would deal uh, with your spirit. Lord God, that you would reach down and touch, that you would draw them, Lord God, unto you. God, we pray for our country tonight. Lord God, we pray for our president. We pray for those that are in leadership. God, that your hand would be upon them. Oh God, that this country would turn to you. Father, I pray that you would help us as your church to humble ourselves and pray and seek you and turn from wicked ways, Lord God, that you might hear and that you might heal. God, that you might do a work that only you can do. Father, minister tonight, Lord God, these illnesses, sicknesses, Lord, that we prayed for. And God, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord God, we thank you for uh, what you have done. Lord, we pray that you would continue that work that you began. Minister, Lord God, I pray. Guide us tonight. Father, we pray the anointing of your spirit, Lord, would rest upon this church. Use us, we pray, for your glory. Hallelujah. We'll praise you tonight in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. 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 Amen. He's faithful. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes, amen. Yes. Yes.
Can you hear me? Can you read about it? Amen. Amen. I'm glad you're on fire. Amen. We do. He's faithful. Yes. He's the healer. Of hope. Amen. I'm glad she's uh, stirred up. She's uh, on fire for the Lord. Amen. Reminds me, we're, uh, we're having revival coming up, and uh, we need to be getting ready for revival. Amen. If there was ever a day that the church needed revival, it's this day and hour that we're living in. We as the church need revival. It's coming up. Oh, they threw it up on there. Look at that. Man, they're good back there. September 27th through the 30th, uh, and this month we're having revival. So I encourage you, put that on your calendar um, and uh, begin praying for that. Set some time aside to pray that God would do uh, a work in your life of revival. How many of you need revival? Amen. We need revival. And so let's pray the Lord would give us a fresh outpouring of His Spirit and uh, and believe in Him to do that. Amen. Sister Charity is going to sing for us tonight. Worship with her. Amen. I am thankful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Um, Sister Sprayberry was talking about Moses and this song that I'm going to sing is called Your Name is Power. And I was thinking about when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and told him he was going to deliver Israel. And Moses said, well, who do I tell them that you are? And he said, I am that I am. And I've heard so many times that, you know, God is, he is what, what we need. He is the I am that I am. But I thought, you know, he's a personal God. And I can just picture those Israelites who've been bound for so long, in, in slavery and captivity for so long. And when Moses came back, they, I can hear their prayers, you know, are, are you the one who's going to deliver us? And he said, I am. Are you the one who's going to break the chains and set us free from Pharaoh? I am. Are you the one who will part the Red Sea? I am. And today he's the same. We say, are you the one who will heal my sick loved one? And he says, I am. Are you the one who will bring the prodigal home? I am. Are you the one who will bring revival? And he says, I am. And I'm so thankful for that. to the darkness
Yes. I had never heard that song before, but I liked it. said, your name is power. It didn't say your name has power. There's a big difference between something having power and it in itself being power. His name is power in and of itself. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. His name is power. His name is, is mighty. It's a place where the righteous run into and they are saved. His name is sufficient. Amen. Have you ever just been going about your day and just called out the name of Jesus? Oh, it's powerful, isn't it? In the middle of the night, in the middle of the struggle of a name that we can call upon. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you're in for a treat tonight. Turn and tell your neighbor, you're in for a treat. You tell them you are about to be blessed. Bishop, Reverend, Holy Father. Can't think of anything else. Brother Johnson, Pastor Johnson, is going to preach the word tonight. We are... Uh, blessed beyond blessed because of him and his ministry and his life and his work for the Lord. And he's going to come minister. I know he has a word from the Lord. Just receive it tonight. And as he calls us to the altars, come receive and uh, let the Lord work in your life. Come ahead, brother. We love you. Can we give him a hand clap of praise? Honor to who honors do. We honor you. We love you. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, rise to meet in the sky. He will come very fast, trumpets will sound. Oh, Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many shall meet their doom. Trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, rise to meet in the sky. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Oh, glory to God. Well, everybody that's had the floor up to this time tonight has said Jesus is coming. Glory to God. Brother Marino led songs about the coming of the Lord. Everybody that's had something to say tonight has talked about the coming of the Lord. Well, I'm glad I'm right on the target. Praise God. Thank you, musicians. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Is it next Sunday night when the shower for Sister Charity... Brother Roy and baby Agnes. Well, I don't really know what her name is. and That's Sunday night. Amen. I hope you remember that. Thank God. Hallelujah. The church that doesn't have children in it is dying. I don't care if it's running 5,000 on Sunday morning. They don't have children. If they aren't ministering to children, if they aren't reaching out with the gospel to children, that church is dying. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And they said, oh, Jesus, isn't this amazing? Isn't this a wonderful, inspiring piece of architecture here? Oh, this is just magnificent. Now, I know the Bible didn't say that. But Jesus 
left some things in here that are blank. I'm just filling in the blanks. Amen. But Jesus said to them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world. Jesus. Oh God we look to you tonight. And we thank you Lord. That you have things in control. You are not surprised. You are not frustrated. You are not wondering what to do next. You are God. Your God Almighty, your sovereign God. And Lord, we don't know the day nor the hour, but we know the season, and we believe, Lord, you're soon to come back. Help us to be ready. Amen. Thank you for standing. The signs of his coming. The disciples come to him and they ask him three questions. When shall these things be? He's just informed them that this magnificent temple that they're so impressed with is going to be torn down stone by stone. Everything's going to be torn down. It's going to be leveled to the ground. And... What shall be the sign of your coming? That's the second question. And the third question was, and when will the end of the world come? Now in Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Amen. We have to understand and separate these three questions here or we're going to have a hard time dealing with this. If we don't understand that, we're going to be placing ladies that are expecting like Sister Charity in doubt or whether they could even go in the rapture of the church or not. And that's not the case. But this question, when shall these things be? They can't believe this can possibly happen. I was passing in front of the old Mayhill School on Mayhill Road a few days ago. And they already had it half smashed to the ground. That old building stood there, some say, for over a hundred years. I was talking to a man the other day that's older than I am, and he said his father went to school there. It had been there a long time. But in a matter of hours, they had it smashed to the ground. Amen. So Jesus is telling them this temple you're looking at is going to be leveled to the ground. And they're shocked. They're shocked. And they said, tell us when in the world, how could this possibly be? And he said, when you see Jerusalem passed about with armies, then you know that it's close. Amen. You know that it's close. And in Luke chapter 21 and verse 21, I believe that's right. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Now in my early Christian experience, I heard some discussions in our country church because that particular congregation at that time for the most part believed that this whole statement, these whole three questions here had to do with the rapture of the church, which it it doesn't. 
And they were in great discussion. What does it mean? <laughs> Run to the mountains. And then in Luke 21, verse 23. But woe unto them that be with child. And to them that get suck in those days. Mothers nursing little kids. And there was a lot of discussion. I'm just a little kid, but I'm listening to what they're saying. Does that mean that an expectant mother is going to have really a difficult time going in the rapture? If she's nursing young child, I would have to say, in all honesty, yes, it's going to be hard for her to make the rapture for a number of reasons. You men don't have a clue. You don't have the foggiest notion what I'm talking about. And I really don't, but I've given it some thought. Amen. This question refers to the attack on Jerusalem that came 60 years after the crucifixion of Christ. When the Roman army came and surrounded Jerusalem and... There were people that escaped and did not go into bondage because they heeded the words that Jesus had taught them. And they remembered, he said, if, if you're up on the housetop, don't come down. Don't go back in the house. Don't run back in to get your slippers and your pajamas. Run as hard as you can go. Escape. Run for your life. And there were people that heard that. They remembered it. And they did what Jesus had taught them and they escaped out of this doomed city before the Roman army could close the gaps. And they were not captured, they were not killed, they were not enslaved at that time. Amen. The Roman army destroyed Jerusalem. They tore that beautiful temple down. They took it down. They sowed the fields with salt. They cut down the olive groves and the olive trees. They leveled that place. They burned. They pillaged. They destroyed Jerusalem to the ground. And the Jews went into captivity. And when you go there and get a chance to see some of the marvelous sights that are there, you find out that it takes years and years and years for an olive tree to ever bear any fruit. Just about the time Israel was coming back from captivity, the olive trees had budded out, grown up, and they had matured, and they were producing a crop. (laughs) Glory to God. All that hard work that that Roman army put in to try to destroy and starve the Jews didn't work. (laughs) Listen, mister, Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. He's coming back. And so the Roman army destroyed Jerusalem. And that question is history. But what about the second question and the third? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And when will the end be? Amen. Now the word of God has a scripture that states, In the end times, men's hearts will fail them for fear at looking upon the things that come upon the face of the earth. We're hearing reports now that death from heart attack has soared since this virus came in. People lost their jobs. They were shut in their house. They weren't able to communicate with anybody outside, just a few in their immediate family. Amen. And because of that, there has been a rash of heart attacks and death through heart attacks. Suicides. The number of suicides have soared through the roof where people come to the place that they said, I can't take it anymore. I can't handle it anymore. I don't know what to do. I'm losing everything. I've lost everything.
We have major cities right now that are partially occupied by foreign people. They're certainly not American people because they've told us their intent is to overthrow the government. They intend to subdue us and make us their servants and their slaves. That's what they plan to do. And there's people in the United States of America right now. There's major cities in our country where already sections of that city is occupied by foreign people and no one of any official status can go in there for the fear of their life. People are dying every day. In the United States of America? You know, it's just been a few months ago. (laughs) We were living pretty normal lives, weren't we? We could go to the grocery store when we wanted to. We could even buy a certain item off the shelves that was in stock that during the virus there, you just couldn't get any of it. And if you weren't well stocked when it started, you were really in trouble. Amen. That was just a few months ago. But look at it now. Look at it now. You can't buy a loaf of bread if you don't put on your mask first. What does that have to do with it? That's the way the rules are. And honey, just hang around. It's going to get worse than that. Amen. It's going to get worse than that. Statements have been made concerning the coming presidential election that it will not be allowed. I'm just telling you what some people have stated. And they've published it over the media. And they're saying under no circumstances are we going to allow this president to serve another term. And you can forget about An announcement being made on election night about who won the election because it isn't going to happen. And they said if things don't go our way, we're going to riot and burn like you never saw before. Distress? Would you say our nation's in distress? Our president was told by an official in a very large area of our country that he couldn't come to that city anymore unless he had his own army with him because he wouldn't be safe to walk down the street. Our country's in distress, but you know, it isn't just our country. It's any country in the world. Anywhere that you want to go. There's distress. There's inflation. There's bankruptcy. There's violence. Amen. Israel hasn't been spared at all. How would you like to live in a country that in some areas is only 60 miles wide, about as far as it is from here to Dallas, maybe a little more, and that rockets would be fired willy-nilly? You never knew where they were going to land. You never knew who was going to get hurt. You never knew who was going to get killed or lose an arm or a leg or anything like that. Amen. Well, if we just hang on a little while longer and things keep going like they're going, if there isn't a change in the situations that are taking place right here, it'll be worse. If you right now are traveling and you take a wrong turn somewhere and you go to certain parts of towns of certain parts of the city, you may never come out alive. You can be in trouble before you know it. You can be engulfed and surrounded by hostile people before you know it. And they don't spare anybody regardless of age. 
They will kill women and children just as quick as anything else. Our nation's in distress. And it's not just this nation. The nations around the world are in distress. Amen. In Revelations 13, 16, verse 16 and 17. We are told that there's coming a time when the powers that are in authority that time, meaning the Antichrist, will force both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their hand or in their foreheads. You probably listened, as I did, to the man speak who was given an assignment to invent a chip that would be planted under the skin that when the virus vaccine is given, the chip would be implanted at that time. And from then on, it would be very easy to determine anywhere if you had the vaccine. That when you went into a store or a place of business, They would know whether you had the vaccine or not because they would have devices there that would read that chip. This man said, when I read the specs and I started out with a team, none of us were Christians. None of us were Christians. We were just on an assignment and we started work. And we built a chip that is one-fourth the size of a grain of rice. We developed a hypodermic needle that was big enough to implant that under the skin. And the specs said they wanted batteries and they wanted them to be charged by the human body. He said as we began to experiment, we found that we could charge these batteries by the changes in temperature of the human body. And if you check your temperature in the morning and in the evening, you'll find it'll vary a little bit. It may be 96.5. It may be 97.3. It'll it'll fluctuate. And he said when we begin to look where the best place would be to put this chip so that those tiny batteries would be charged, we found the best place to put it was on the forehead right below the hairline Or on the back of the right hand. He said, I wasn't a Christian. I didn't read any significance in any of it. Some believe that that chip will be mandatory. Not only will we be required to take the vaccine. If that startles you. If you can be required right now to put on a mask to go in and buy a loaf of bread. Amen. These people are in the driver's seat if we didn't know it. Amen. That the vaccine will not be optional. It will be mandatory. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just telling you what individuals have put out. And it also, the chip will be required at the same time. It will have your name on it and personal data, among other things. And it will have proof that you have been vaccinated against this virus. And that it will be so dangerous... You could be so dangerous to other people, not only your family, but other people you meet and work with and shop with without this vaccine that is going to be mandatory that you take it. I'm not saying it will or it won't. I'm just telling you, we need to be doing some praying and thinking what we're going to do. It's one thing to make a statement. And a lot of times... Before we know the facts. 
I will say this. Unless Jesus Christ comes before this vaccine comes out, it is not the mark of the beast. This chip is not the mark of the beast. The man who went on to tell how he and his team developed this little tiny chip has since received the Lord Jesus Christ, his personal Savior. And he said, somebody told me to read over in Revelations that scripture we just looked at. And he said, I read it and I turned pale. And I said, my God, what have we done? What have we done? Now the mark of the beast will come under the authority of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be in power. If you read the scripture, you'll see that. Amen. To date, he's not. He may very well be alive. He may be in the background somewhere. I don't know. I've heard people preach who could tell you who the Antichrist is. I've never been able to do that. I don't know who he is. But I don't doubt that he's alive somewhere right now. Amen. And it's my personal opinion as well for whatever that, that's worth that the coming of the Lord has leapfrogged ahead by tremendous volume in the last three or four months. Mister, if we thought the coming of the Lord was close on January the 1st of 2020, hey man, we don't know anything at all right now. Mister, it's at the door. It's the very door. Hallelujah. All heaven is excited. Josh told his mother he'd been there. Whatever your take on that may be, that's up to you. But I'll tell you, I'm a believer. He had some information that he couldn't have had. No way. If he hadn't been on the scene. And he told his mother, he said... I saw a table spread. Everything was there. And he said, as far as the eye could see, I could see it. Listen, ladies, how far ahead of a meal do you set the table? Do you set the table months or days or years ahead of when you're going to serve your family of your guests? I say you don't. The very fact that he saw the banquet table that went as far as the eye could see with everything in place, hallelujah. The flat there was there. The food was there. It's an indication, mister, there's about to be a banquet, hallelujah. There's about to be a banquet, thank God. And the Bible said the Lord himself is gonna serve. Can you imagine what that's gonna be like? Oh, Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So I don't know. This little chip could very well be the technology that will be used. At least we see that it's available. To people that doubted that anything like that could ever happen. Amen. Whoa. I saw some people the other day. They had forgot their mask. Now, a mask is a little tiny thing. And by the way, if you're worried that we're violating the law in here by not having masks, the church is exempt Inside the sanctuary, we don't have to wear it. If you do, you're welcome to it. My hat's off to you. Sometimes I do, especially when I'm praying close to people. I do that. Not that I think the mask has one iota of any benefit, but that's just me. The only mask I've found or read about that would really make a difference, I couldn't get because they said we're reserving that for medical te technicians. It was a M99 or something like that. I don't know. Amen. But if you're worried about 
the law being violated here because people don't have a mask on in here. Uh, you can rest at ease because we're exempt. We don't have to have mask on while we're in the sanctuary. But if you choose to do that, you're welcome to it. I, I, I don't criticize you. No one does. Amen. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Well, somebody has changed the scriptures. Because what I thought was going to pop up there was the one that talks about the end wouldn't come until there was a great falling away. I'm sorry, I, I got confused. Let no man deceive you, for that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first. Just before the man of sin, who is the Antichrist, is revealed. Just at the time of the rapture, if you please. There's a great falling away. Amen. I don't know how many people I talked to in a week who just a few months ago would have been in this service tonight, but they're not here tonight because they've lost the desire to even come to the house of God. They have no desire to come here. They go other places. They do other things. But they've lost the desire to come to the house of God. Listen, if I miss one service, it affects me. Don't miss church. Don't miss church. It'll affect you. It'll affect you. Amen. I don't understand it. I just know it does. Amen. If I miss two, it really affects me. And three, I begin to lose a desire. And there's people that have left the sanctuary of this church that unless God is able to deal with their soul, they will never come back through these doors again. There are churches that have opened their sanctuary and nobody came. There are pastors that have submitted a letter of resignation to the officials. And they've walked away and said, we're going to try to go into some other kind of line of work. I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about situations all over this place. My hat is off to our pastor. My hat's off to our pastor. He has worked overtime. And the staff that works with him have done the same thing. These people have actually put in more hours and put in more effort and worked harder since this thing started than they did before. And they weren't letting any grass grow then. Brother Brad and Sister Dacia have been up here all hours. Brother and Sister Preston. Brother and Sister Kirkland. Amen. They've been here at all kinds of hours because our pastor had a burden to minister to this flock. He had a burden to minister to this flock. There's pastors that locked the door to the church, gave somebody a few tapes to play on Sunday morning, and they went, I won't say where, <laughs> but they went, to just put up their heels and enjoy themselves. Do they need to relax? Yeah. But there's times, mister, when you're in the heat of the battle. It's not the time to take a hike. Amen. When people are hanging on by a thread. Amen. During this time, individuals, the devil has targeted his church. He's come against this congregation. Things have erupted that our pastor and his staff have dealt with behind the scenes. 
you probably didn't know about it. But it's gone on hour after hour, day after day. I thank God for our pastor and the leadership that he's had. And what he's provided for us. That he has done everything he could to minister to as many people as he could. Amen. Hallelujah. And you that are watching the broadcast. If you're going everywhere except the house of God. You're in trouble. You're in big trouble. I don't have any antagonistic situation. But the closest I ever came to losing everything was when I got in a job working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. And I wasn't going to church. My wife could, she could see. My pastor could, but I couldn't. I thought I was doing great. I was making more money than I'd ever made. I thought, praise God, God's answered prayer. Hallelujah. The devil was taking me down the tube because he was taking away my desire to worship God and to be in the presence of God, to pray and seek God in the Word of God. I don't understand, church. I never have. I don't understand what it does. But Jesus told us not to forsake it. <laughs> And for 64 years, it's worked for me and my family. Somebody said, at your age, do you ever have any fears, you know? That... Yeah, I've got one. I'm honest, just one. I fear some situation happening to me physically. Where I wouldn't be able to come to the house of God. I fear that. That's the only thing I fear. Glory to God. And someone's coming to the instruments now. Uh, If you've been going everywhere else except the house of God and you haven't been to the house of God in months, you know what you need? It's not for everybody at the tabernacle to put on a mask. That's not what you need. You need for God to revive His power in your life. You've lost the power of God. Back when the girls were at home, we had a 26-foot travel trailer. We decided, somebody told us it was cool up in the Rocky Mountains, even in the summer. So I had a 15-passenger van. I, I, I bought two different vans and wore them out, really. The church did. The church wasn't able at that time to purchase a van, and so... I bought one, and most people thought it was the church's, but it wasn't. It was mine. But it had a small engine in it. I'd never been to the Rocky Mountains before. We were enthralled at the beauty of it. And we started up this pass, and we're looking, oh, look at that. Oh, look over there. The next thing I knew, we got halfway up there. And I look down at the speedometer and I'm bumping five miles an hour and zero. And I thought, whoa. I shifted down a gear. Nothing happened. I floorboarded the accelerator. Nothing happened. I shifted down to the lowest gear I had. Nothing happened. I looked in the rearview mirror down that mountain and it was like a serpent curving and I thought, Lord, I'd never be able to back this thing all the way back down there. So I got my crew ready. I told the girls and their mother, I said, look, if this thing quits and it looked like it was going to before we got to the top, we were a long ways from the top. 
People was passing us and laughing. They knew. So I got, her, I got them ready. Sister Pastor, she was in there too. I said, when I can't go no further, everybody get out and get a rock and put it under one of the wheels. That was the only solution I had. But I said, let's pray. <laughs> oh, glory to God. So we were praying. The girls were getting ready to bail out. Lord, no telling what would have happened. They're liable to fell off the mountain. Hate it. And that thing just kept chugging just a little bit and it got to the top. Now, I didn't get mad at the mountain. I didn't get mad at the people that built that road up that grade. You know what my problem was? I was underpowered. I didn't have enough power to pull the rig up that mountain. And number two, if you're a flatlander, let me give you a little advice. When you go to the mountains, watch your RPMs. Don't ever let your RPMs bleed off. I was busy looking at the sights. I seen things I never saw before and I waited until it was too late. I'm not going to get any RPMs. We went ahead and we enjoyed the Rocky Mountains. We came back and I went over to Decatur to the Dodge House. And I said, I want a 15 passenger van and I want the biggest V8 engine in it that Dodge makes. He said, well, sir, we make a 440 cubic engine with a four-barrel carburetor, but those vans don't come with them. I would have to have special order. It'd have to be special made. I said, get it. Next year, we went back. Same travel trailer. Same five of us. We get to the same mountain. It hadn't changed. It's just as steep then as it was a year before. But we had the biggest engine Dodge could get in that van. I pulled that thing down. I passed motorhomes. I passed Carvettes. I passed the bike riding group riding Harley Hogs. I passed everything on that mountain and when I got to the top of it, I was still going 40 miles an hour. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The mountain was the same. The road was the same. The power was different. Amen. If you've lost the desire to come to the house of God, your problem is not this congregation. Amen. Your problem is not the governor. Your problem is not the virus. You need more power and God can give you power by the Spirit of God and the presence of God right then. And Luke sums it up in chapter 21 and verse 28 and he said, records the voice of the Master. When these things begin to come to pass, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. That's what I'm telling you. Listen, folks, a person's got to be blind and dumb not to see. The Word of God has told us. We've read it and we've heard it preached on and we've studied it for years and years. And right now, right in front of our eyes, it's coming to pass. It's taking place. Jesus said when these things begin, look up. Lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Jesus could come before we get to the altar tonight. I've wondered sometimes about the person who steps out in the aisle and says, Well, you know, I'm going to give my heart to God. And the trumpet sounds, and they miss it. 
They're on their way. They almost made it. But the trumpet sounded. Listen, when the command comes from Jehovah God the Father, when the nod comes for Jesus to step out with that trumpet, Mr. He's not going to wait for anybody. He's not going to wait for nobody. And in the book of 1 Thessalonians verse four, chapter 4 and verse 16, the Bible said, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remaining shall caught up together, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Stand up and lift both hands. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God. God, help us to keep the spiritual Holy Ghost desire to worship you. To be in your house to encourage other people. To pray the prayer of faith. God, as we wait in your presence tonight. That little old chip that that man built and his team has the capability of doing everything the Antichrist wants it to do. It could be it, but to do that, Jesus would have to come before they start giving it out. You understand that? It's not the mark of the beast until the beast steps out. And thank God he hasn't yet. Some think he has. No. No. But everything the Antichrist wants the mark of the beast to do, that little ship has the capability of doing it. It could happen. Look how quick things got out of hand. I always thought the bank was a pretty good, safe place to put your money. I went out there yesterday. Some guy had backed up with a truck and hooked on to the ATM machine with a chain and drug it out by the roots. He could have unhooked from that thing and turned that truck around and drove through the front door if he'd have wanted to and got into anything else he wanted to. Listen, there is no safe place except in the presence of God. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I want us to come tonight. I want us just to come and lift up our heads and praise God because our redemption, the coming of the Lord, hallelujah, is right before us. Thank God. I want us to just lift up our heads and praise God and thank Him. That our redemption, we've sung about it, we've prayed about it, the preachers have preached about it. Hallelujah. It's right before us now. It could be any minute. Israel is a nation. Technology exists. And if people don't think the Antichrist can do what the Bible says he can, all you got to do is look around you. Oh, yeah. Amen. God, by the Spirit of God, we thank you that your coming is very soon. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. 
Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tent to there. After Jesus, I'll come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tempter then. Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tempter then. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound in a thousand years. We'll have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. God doesn't want you tonight or any other time to start confessing a bunch of sins that you've already confessed. Because when you confessed them, He forgave you and He forgot them. He doesn't know what you're talking about when you start going there. The devil will try to get you into that kind of mode. Don't make that mistake, glory to God. Praise Him. Thank you, Brother Kirkland. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be in prayer for the service Sunday morning. Be in prayer for revival. Glory to God. Let's remember those requests that we had tonight. The Lord bless you. We'll see you Sunday. Praise the Lord. Well, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is.